What's up guys, MTG Jedi here. We are on the test server. Thank you so much to Polarium for allowing us on the test server, but I'm also salty at you, Polarium, for how you have this fusion set up. I do not like it, and I am salty about it. I think that since we have new epics in the game, those should be a part of the fusion, and I don't understand why you're just randomly adding them to the game instead of putting them in the game as the fusion. This would allow all of the early game people more access to more epics, which helps them progress and helps them stay in the game. Now, with that being said, there are some amazing new champions being added to the game, and what we're going to do is do a damage test on some of them to start as we're going through their kit. Let me know if you like this setup, let me know what you like and dislike about these champions, tell me your feelings in the comments below. So let's jump right in. We are going to be testing in Dragon 20, because that's where people test things. So we're going to do a little damage test for everybody so you can see what their multipliers are like. So here is the team that we're going to be using. Mashald for increased crit damage, Lydia for decreased defense and weaken, Badel for extra damage from poisons, Mithrala for increased attack, increased defense and hex, and then our damage dealer slot, which I'm going to show you how this should compare when we're using an OP champion like Baron. So for each setup, with each ability, what we will do is have all of these buffs and debuffs up. Then we'll come to the ability that we want to test, and I'll show the damage like this. 300,000 for Baron, which obviously is amazing, and he's in good gear, and this is a crazy damage setup, but that's the comparison that we need so that we know how good are these damage dealers in comparison to an S-tier damage dealer. Now let's hop back over to each of the champions, and we'll flip back and forth between this screen and their ability screen so you can see each ability in action. Let's start with the man, the myth, the rabbit, Razzlevar. You're the whole reason why we're doing this. So he has an A1 triple hitter that is going to give a turn meter fill. Also, he has damage based on attack and speed. Let's test that A1 and see how much damage it does. One, two, three. He didn't even get the third one, so 54k per hit. So that's 150k on his A1, and that is very solid. Really decent multipliers on that one. Now to his A2. His A2, I think, is the reason why he's going to be good, and that's because he has an AoE leech and a heal for himself whenever he places those. Again, damage based on attack and speed. Now, if this has good multipliers, he should wipe this wave with no problems. 200k above that and we did we had a three percent resist on the decreased defense from lydia over here otherwise he would be dead as well yeah not like s tier like baron but yes very good multipliers there and lastly he's got the a3 that has an increased speed and an increased accuracy but uh and he puts that on all allies before attacking again also based on attack and speed one note before we go see the damage on that at the moment i do not have him very fast he is kind of slow and built with a lot of damage it's possible that it would be better to build him with less damage and faster speed to increase the amount of potential output we'll get to see that a little bit more when we test him in another area in the game i think y'all know we're gonna test him in hydra yes we will and let's see that a3 damage that is going to be boom 200k excellent damage here from razzlevarg i I'm really impressed so far with him, and I do like his kit. I think if you are working on Hydra, then this is a must-get fusion. If you already one-key all of the Hydras, then this might be a skip for you, because I don't think he's going to be an arena nuker, but let's finish the rest of his kit first. Now, for the rest of his kit, he has this passive that has the increased speed um, to himself. 
So he's going to gain a lot of speed, a lot of speed, and he's going to be cycling through his abilities like mad action. And so I'm really excited to test that. You're going to get to see that live because I haven't tested it yet. I have just geared him up. So for his total stats in the damage build, he had 6,200 attack, 256 crit damage, and you see him with a low speed there. I also didn't put accuracy on him because we're just testing him for damage. I don't think he is a damage dealer, but he, like, I don't think he's an arena nuker, but I think he's a good damage dealer. I didn't finish all of his masteries, I just put on damage masteries so that we could test the damage. I will put on the masteries that I think are appropriate when we get to that time. The next and only champion for the fusion is going to be Delaja. I don't know if that's the right way to say it, you tell me. I have really wanted an HP or defense based damage dealer on the free to play account. So my first thought was test her for damage. You can see that in this build as well. 70k HP, which I wish was higher. 287 crit damage um, and, you know, a pretty decent build. I can't get these stats on the free to play, but that doesn't matter. We're trying to test her for damage. So let's go ahead and start looking at her kit. She has the A1 double hitter, and she has a 20% chance of placing poison. She has an A2 AoE attack, um, that or AoE that has attack down, and then her A3 is a defensive support role type of ability that places a shield on all allies equal to 20% of her max HP and a continuous heal buff, which is really amazing. And I do like this champion. I will be getting her on the free to play account. She also has a sweet counter attack when there are other lizardmen on the same team, AKA Pytheon, uh, or, um, the Venomage that I also have, okay? So we got multiple options here. So let's see her damage in action. Let me know which way you prefer. Do you prefer ability and then damage, ability then damage, or all three abilities and then all three damages? Let me know your preference. Okay, so her A1, uh, we could weak hit here, but we'll just try it anyway. Uh, 40,000, and that's about what I was getting in my testing as well. So it's a double hitter. So we did do 80,000 on the A1, which is actually not bad. Like, that's that's reasonable multipliers. I'm not sure if that's a good enough reason to build her for damage, though. So let's see that A2, which this would be her big damaging ability if, if there is one. So let's slow it down here if I can manage to click one time. And we have, you know, not enough to kill everyone. I mean, we I think we weak hit on Horden here, but this is not a damage dealer, okay? And you might be saying, well, duh, Jedi, we knew that, but you didn't. <laughs> we, we didn't know that until we actually test it, but we definitely suspected it. I, I mean, I like the damage on her A1, and then her A3 is not a damaging ability, so we don't really need to worry about that, okay? We only need to test those two. I do still think she's a good champion, and I like the counterattack in her kit because that's going to help people survive. You know what I mean? We are going to be placing poisons. We're going to be healing herself. I like that. She's going to counterattack and do those things. Decent multipliers on the A1. But if anything, we'd be putting like crit rate gloves on, not crit damage. Now, there is another champion that's going to be in the game here. And this is one of the epics that should be a part of the fusion, but is not. And this is Lockwain. He's an attack-based champion from Sylvan Watchers. And he does have good multipliers. Let's look at his kit first. A1, 30% chance to steal a random buff. A2, he can remove Veil and Perfect Veil and a random buff from enemies, which is great. A3... Uh, is a two-hitter that ignores shields and resets the cooldown of this skill if it kills an enemy. Now, this looks like an amazing ability, but you don't grant an extra turn or anything. You could just use it every turn. And then his passive increases his accuracy by 10 for each buff on each enemy, and so that is helpful to strip those buffs. He's in a pretty, damage, pretty damaging build here. Not insane, but pretty damaging because I did put some accuracy on him. 
because this is how I would build him, you know, if I had the opportunity to get him. And I will try to get him. I'm just sad that he's not a part of the fusion. So let's see the A1, which is going to have really nice damage here. 159k. And that was on one hit. On one hit. Ridiculous A1 damage. Now the A2, the AoE, is also going to have really good damage. 173k. Fully clears the wave. Very good damage from an epic here. And then the A3, which has to have like a 6 or 7 multiplier or something crazy. 149k on one of the hits, which is absolutely ridiculous. Oh, my apologies. The A1 is a single hitter and the A3 is the double hitter. But we had about the same amount of damage on both of them, which might make his A1 ridiculous in terms of multipliers. And then, then his A3 would have done about 300 damage, 300,000. So that's pretty crazy, okay? Now, let's take a look at the other champions who are not going to be tested for damage, but you want to know their kit. The third epic, which is going to be added to the game, but is still not a part of the fusion, is going to be Wyrenin of the Silken. She has an A1 decrease attack. She has an A2 turn meter fill, increased speed, and then she's going to be an amazing reviver for this faction at the epic level for our Sylvan Watchers Faction Wars. I would be recommending everybody to get this champion if we could. And then last but not least, we have Claydna, who is an amazing champion for Sylvan Watchers as well. She has an A1 sleep that she boosts her turn meter if the sleep is placed. She has what we all are wanting out of our new fusion and that's the decrease speed as well but decrease speed leech and heals all champions on your team by 20 percent of her max hp then she has an aoe block buffs revive on death then she has a 60 percent chance with books of completely blocking incoming damage for the first hit of an attack once per turn this is going to be an amazing arena champion. This is going to be an amazing champion for so many places in the game. She can do Hydra. She can do hard dungeons, probably. I think she is absolutely amazing. And it's a shame that we can't get her. But she is going to be great. So let's talk about the epic that we are all going to be able to get if we want to. And that's Delaja. I think that she could play in clan boss because of this ability i think that obviously she'll be good in faction wars i don't know if she's going to be able to solo things like i don't know if we want her to do that she only has so many poisons on her a1 it would be very slow to solo things but i think that she could solo things i think she is a great support champion uh, but she's an HP-based champion, which is fine. I think she's going to be great for Faction Wars, which I'm very excited about. But I don't know where else we would use her. I think she could go in basically any team to support you. But, like, she is a double hitter, but that's not going to be good enough for Fire Knight. I don't know. Maybe she could go in your Ice Golem team. Let me know where you think you would use her, but I definitely am going to get a copy of this champion for my account, and she's going to be rocking that cool mohawk on my account for sure. The Fusion Champion, I am excited about him. I am excited about him, and I want to see him in Hydra. So that's the last thing we're going to do here to wrap up the video, is I'm going to re-gear him for you and remaster him, and then we're going to see a Hydra run. Now, before we do that, I think if you have the opportunity to get Razzlevarg, he's going to be way better than the Epic in this chance. But if the other Epics were in there, I would say no. All of the epics combined are going to be better than him, but we don't have that as an option for some reason that I'm clueless about. So let me re-gear him and I'll be right back. Okay, so you can see a pretty big difference in the build here. We're going up 100 speed, over 100 speed, and we're lowering the crit damage by 100. So we're basically flipping that. 
we're also lowering the attack stat quite a bit, and our goal here is hits, not specific damage on each hit. We want lots of hits. Let's go ahead and equip that, and then let me get the mastery set up for you as well. Okay, we have a little bit different setup here for the Masteries, which I'm kind of excited about. But the main thing is Giant Slayer and then a Counter Attack here. If you can't get those accuracy numbers, then you would want to be coming over to the Support Tree for our typical Accuracy 3. Um, the Lore of Steel is good too, but it's not going to be as impactful. You could get Sniper and you could get Master Hexer. I like both of those, but I think the counter attack is going to be helpful as well. I put Shield Breaker here because I don't think we're going to be at full HP all the time. Maybe I'm wrong, so I put Shield Breaker there for that head that puts the shield up so that we could break it easier. So those are the masteries that we're going to do there. Let's hop in and show you the Hydra team that we're going to use him in. I'm very excited about this. First of all, we're going to do Brutal Clan Boss here for Hydra because I think a lot of people are working on Brutal number one. And number two, this is where I used to use this team all the time. And I think that's the gear that is still set up on them. So I wanted to run it in Brutal instead of Nightmare. But I did switch this team over to Nightmare and it is my new Nightmare team. So you can see here, I've done a lot of work on this team, and I get that it's not free to play friendly, but if you have these champions, build this team, this is probably the best Hydra team on your account. I've been impressed with it on my account, I've scaled it to Nightmare, I've built it for other people in takeovers, it's just an amazing team. Duchess, Krisk, Geomancer, Husk, Nikmo, and Ugo. Now here, what we're going to do is we're going to replace Nikmo with our new dude because their kits are very similar. Uh, he's right here, Razzlevarg. So this is going to be our team here. This is a full auto team, which is great. And I hope that it's going to do a lot of damage. This previously was a one key on all Hydra rotations, so I'm hoping that's going to be the case here. We will come in here and look at the beginning of the fight, and then we will also fast forward ahead and see what the damage is going to be. So probably going to be a long run here as it typically is. Um, that was Razzlevarg doing about 10k there. So not like the best. But again, he's not the main damage dealer in this team. We're going for hits over individual damage. You know, we could build him slower and build tons of damage on him like we had before. But I don't think that that's the right build. Maybe we need a hybrid of those and run him at like... I still think we would need to get him to like 250 uh, to be faster than Krisk. Krisk needs to be the slowest one in the team because he has the resistance so we don't get all of our buffs stolen. Now, I don't like this rotation of Hydra. This is one of the tougher ones, um, but that's okay. So you can see here only 10k, and that's all right, but we keep getting Razzlevarg's hits while we do not have decreased defense out. So eventually that'll line up, I hope. And we have the leech out there now, which is not bugged anymore. Um, and that's good. That is very good. And you can see the shield buff up there. So if we are doing damage to that head, then we will do extra damage. The triple hitter on the A1. So basically, you're not going to see big numbers here because his damage is going to add up over time. So I'll probably check in a couple times um, if I have any relevant tidbits of information or we can just see how things are going along the way. But right now, I think it's about the same. That's kind of hard to say, but I think it's about the same. So we'll come back in and we'll see how well we're doing in just a minute. Okay, so coming in here up to turn 50, we are at a good damage rate. 
If your team is built well, you should be able to make it to turn 100 or farther. And so this seems like an easy one key on Brutal here. We're putting out great damage. Razzle Varg is doing an insanely good job at healing himself, which is really cool because that's one of the things you need if you're going to have an attack-based champion. They, they need to be able to survive. And honestly, he hasn't been hurting. Part of that's the team I have him in, but part of it is his kit because he's taken a lot of damage here. And usually he does not have the ally protection from Krisk because he's taking so many turns. So this is really, really nice damage. I actually think that this is better damage than I normally do with Nikmo. And if that is the case, replacing Nikmo in my Nightmare Hydra team is an incredible claim to fame for a fusion champion. Nikmo's great and all, but if I can do more damage with this guy, I'm on board with that. So we're already at 20 million on turn 54. I'm excited to see what happens. I think his speed should be ranked up already. But as soon as we can kill this stupid fear head and stop skipping our turns, our damage is going to ramp back up again. So let's see that happen. Let's go. Okay, wow. We just hit the one key on turn 82. This is definitely a lot higher damage. So I need this guy on my account, which means you need him on your account. My roster is very robust from making content. I have hundreds of champions leveled up and he's going to replace someone in one of my main teams. That just does not happen hardly ever. It does not happen hardly ever. It happened last week or the week before with Mishinaki. That turned into my new Brutal Hydra team. Now Razzlevarg is going to go in my Ultra, well, my Nightmare Hydra team. This is this is crazy. This is crazy amazing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let this play out for real this time, and let's see the final damage. All right, I am super hyped here. 42 million, which is not my personal best, but definitely a good record here. Razzlevarg was the first one to die, so it's not really surprising that he didn't have higher damage. I think this is the lowest I could expect from him. Um, you can see here he's not quite in the same range as Geo and Husk, but I think that there's a lot of potential here, and this is just his first build, right? He had 1.2 million healing for himself. That's also incredible. <laughs> I absolutely love that. So I'm very pleased with this damage output. I think he's a great fusion. And if you can't get him, getting a copy of that epic for your faction war team seems like a great idea as well. Um, just so you can see Duchess did no damage over there as per usual, but that is not her role in the team. Obviously her role is survival. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button. Tell me all your thoughts in the comments below. Will you be going for the epic or the fusion or skipping it all together? And I'll see you guys in the next video.